Yeah, you're right. I think a top 25 player is a challenge, and that leads us to those next all-star level players. I call them the Tier B All-Stars, and it certainly stands with, uh, or starts with Brandon Ingram. It's a straight salary swap, Ingram, for Simmons. I think the big question, Malika, is how does it fit in Philadelphia, where you already have Tobias Harris, and how does it fit in New Orleans, where you have Zion Williamson, although injured, both players kind of duplicate each other. And what else would Philadelphia want back? So, um, works money-wise, but certainly from a basketball standpoint, there are some concerns there. So let's get into a couple more that you proposed. How could the Sixers make a deal work around DeMonted Sabonis at the Pacers? Yeah, that's my favorite one. Mm. Uh, and it was just named um, Player of the Week in the Eastern Conference this week. And when you look at a player like Sabonis, he's got a team-friendly contract, $19.8 million. He's under contract for another three seasons. You would have to add another player just to get the money work. Um, so is that maybe a player like Karis LeVert? Maybe you get a third team involved, potentially like Cleveland. But here's the question. How does Sabonis fit next to Tobias Harris and Joel Embiid? And uh, one thing to note with Sabonis, 63% of his attempts this year have been uh, less than five feet. So does that duplicate what uh, Embiid already does? Or is it just a situation where you get him and you figure out something like that later? Yeah, it's similar to what we were talking about with Sabonis. And I think certainly you could do a Simmons for Fox, you know, straight swap, or maybe you do include a team like Indiana where a player like Sabonis goes to Sacramento. But here's the question. You're looking at a player, a young player like Tyrese Maxey. Is he kind of having a better season than the Aaron Fox right now? And I think you can make the argument, yes. So does that kind of duplicate getting Fox, but a little bit more expensive? So Another one of those trades that works, but from a basketball standpoint, I think there's some current concerns there. I got one more for you, Bobby. How about C.J. McCollum? Would the Sixers be able to make something work there? I thought you'd never ask about C.J. McCollum. <laughs> yes, certainly a McCollum for Simmons swap works. But here's the question if you're Joe Cronin, their interim general manager in Portland. How much do you have to give up and how much is too much here when you look at potentially a player like Nasir Little? Um, certainly draft picks would have to be involved. Keep in mind, Malika, they owe uh, the Trailblazers owe Chicago a protected first round pick this year. Well, are you willing to lift that protection in order to trade future picks 2024, 2026? So certainly a deal like that works. But I think if you're Portland, you have to ask how much is too much. Mm, well, thank you, Bobby. You've certainly given us something to chew on here. I do want to bring back in our panel. Zach, I want to start with you. Which, if any, of the, the trades that Bobby Marks just proposed are you feeling? The only one I'm super interested in is Ingram, and I don't think that's realistic because the Simmons-Zion fit, theoretically, in New Orleans is not awesome. Look, between Seth Curry and Tyrese Maxey, I have two small guards who are balling out, so I'm not sure the Sixers would be really that super into getting De'Aaron Fox. My center is a top-10 player in the NBA, so I don't really need DeMontis Sabonis. What I need is a 3 and D and a lot more wing, and that's what Brandon Ingram is. I just don't know that he's gettable without it being some sort of wacky three and four and five team monstrosity. Here's the Blazers one, because I do think the Blazers who are slip sliding away need to shake things up. And I think Simmons and Dame are a great fit. If Dame is off the table, I don't know if Philly does this. My hunch is they wouldn't. Mm. But this is the place that it I, this is the landing spot to me where both teams have to have the all hands on deck meeting. CJ McCollum, Nasir Little, a, a tweener forward who fits what I want to do in Philly. Two first-round picks, maybe lightly protected, maybe unprotected. That's the point where Portland, I think, is giving up a fair price. Anything more, mm. and I think they get spooked. We're giving up too much of our future. Anything less, Philly doesn't listen. I don't know if the Sixers do that deal, but that's a, that's a fair-ish trade to me. I like Today that. not in like you're speaking the gospel. Oh, yeah, pr I, preach, Zach, because, you know, I was looking at this and writing notes as you were going. You know, B.I. and Sabonis, 3 and D, you sort of feel good about the defensive prowess of the Sixers. And then Sabonis, you, you sort of get sort of uh, like Al Horford vibes, like will mm -hmm. this work, you know, another dominant center. Um, I like the guard angle with De'Aaron Fox and C.J. McCollum, but I lean towards C.J. McCollum. Interesting. Well, we'll see if any of those end up going down. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Jag Mangit for Jaggy Sports. Big day in the NBA today. You have December 15th, NBA opens up for trades. Now, what does this mean? This means today is the first day that a lot of NBA players are eligible for a trade. 
Now, that being said, um, there's a lot of movement uh, being told right now. So you have a guy named Jake Fisher, who's a reporter. He's pretty good. He's like, you know, he tells legit uh, stuff. And he reported that, remember how I said that the Lakers were going to offer um, Ben Simmons for, uh, or sorry, uh, offer Russ Westbrook for Ben Simmons. I said that yesterday and Jake reported that they did offer it, but he can confirm it that the Sixers rejected that offer. Now, why did they reject that offer? Because if you guys rem remember, Daryl Morey was the the uh, general manager, president, whatever, for the Houston Rockets, and he made that trade for Chris Paul for uh, Russell Westbrook. Now, with that being said, Daryl Morey kind of regrets that decision, and that's why he shipped out Russell Westbrook. Um, I, I he didn't want to make that move, but it was a tension between James Harden and CP3. But that's another topic for another discussion. So um, basically, you have a lot of trades in the NBA, and we'll get to that in a second here. But congratulations to just congratulations to Steph Curry for hitting the the three last night in breaking Ray Allen's all-time three-point shot last night in MSG I think it was like a seven minute mark in the first quarter phenomenal player um, and there's another discussion is he MVP or is KD MVP so you know yesterday he proved that in my eyes he's the MVP for sure but a lot of the, a lot of people are saying it's KD but we can discuss that at another time. But right now, I want to tell you about the trades. Now, you have um, Jake reported that uh, the Sixers rejected the, the Lakers offer for Russell Westbrook. And, you know, um, I don't know why. Like, the Sixers are just asking for the farm. Um Ben Simmons is just sitting there like he's not doing any good for the Sixers itself. So, you know, um, they are looking elsewhere. Another place for Ben Simmons to go, I'm hearing, is that the Pelicans offered a number of picks for Ben Simmons. That could be on the table. I'm hearing that Jeremiah Grant is on the table because he um, he's going to get paid a lot of money. But Detroit Pistons, I don't know why, for some reason do not want to pay this guy in the future long term pay him a lot of money that does not make sense to me but um because you you're already a bad team anyway so might as well just do something but you know i think they want to get younger i think they want to um build up as opposed to give money because they know that Cade cunningham is a legit superstar in the making he will come into his own in the, in the next couple of years and they're going to pay him a great amount of money. So, um, yeah, Detroit is going to offer him up. Also, Jalen Brown. Now, this is a very uh, surprising and shocking move if it happens. I just, I, I can't see it happening because the Boston Celtics are always complacent about everything that they do. Not only because it was Danny Ainge who sat on his ass for since 2007 since making that um, KG Ray Allen trade he's just sat on his ass and I think the only trade that he actually made was Fournier for um, for a bunch of picks and whatnot uh, for um, I think it was last year and Fournier ended up walking and lucky for Celtics fans Danny Ainge stepped aside so I'm not sure if Brad Stevens has the uh, the guts to pull off a trade like Jalen Brown but you never know I've seen I've seen something happen before but yeah we'll see what happens on that note so like I said a lot of trades in the NBA uh, taking place as of right now a lot of discussions big names under play you have um Russell Westbrook, obviously, obviously uh, um, 
Damian Lillard, uh, you have CJ McCollum, Jalen Brown, Ben Simmons, a bunch of picks from, uh, you know, um, the Pelicans. Let's not forget that uh, OKC has 17 picks, uh, I believe, in the next three or four years. I'm not 100% sure. So they have the, uh, the stuff to get what they want, but do they want someone who I just mentioned? The only person that I think they should get is Jeremiah Grant because he is fairly still young. They could still uh, get J uh, Jalen Brown, but Jalen Brown is more uh, injury prone. Than Jeremiah Grant so I, I, I pick Jeremiah Grant uh, for OKC to get they should get him but uh, you never know any breaking news stay tuned to Jaggy Sports uh, it is December the 15th big day in the NBA today Jaggy Sports Jag Manget, December 15th